This is Neil's Han Dynasty. Be kind, helpful, and grateful. Buy some silver and some platinum and some crystallized osmium because uh, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why you should do it. Uh, <laughs> but in the same instance, I'm the only one out there that said BRICS is not offering a money system that we will be using. I'm also the only one out there that I've heard saying India wants to be a world reserve currency. And everyone flack draws. Bah, Neil, Neil doesn't know what he's talking about. Neil doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, heck, I play chess. I see moves, 10, 10 moves ahead in advance and what's going on. Now check this out. Hear it from the Indian PM's mouth himself. India wants to be a world reserve currency. But aren't they going to be part of the BRICS money system? Well, hell, I guess not. Go BRICS. Central banks have a thankless job. A lot of pressure, but not a lot of credit. Just consider India's central bank. The RBI or the Reserve Bank of India consider everything they do. They protect the Indian rupee from volatility. They defend Indians from inflation. They keep our interest rates in check, and they keep commercial banks honest. None of it is easy. But Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given the RBI a new task, an arguably tougher one. The Prime Minister was speaking at the RBI's Foundation Day. Listen to what he said. This prayas hona chahiye ki hamara rupaya puri dunia mein jangda accessible bhi ho, acceptable bhi ho. Globalize the rupee. That's the message from the government. But what does it mean? A global currency is basically a reserve currency. It is used in global trade. It's held by most central banks, and it's easily controvertible. Uh, it's easily convertible, rather. You can buy and sell this currency easily. And how many such currencies are there? Not many. The US dollar is the biggest one. It makes up 60% of all foreign exchange reserves, plus 40 to 50% of global trade. Other examples are the euro and the pound sterling. But nowadays, a lot of countries are de-dollarizing. They're moving away from the US dollar. China wants to globalize its yuan. BRICS is talking about its own currency. And now India wants to globalize the rupee. But why the sudden rush? Well, one reason is financial. Many countries are struggling with foreign reserves. They use dollars to repay loans and to trade. As a result, they're running out of dollars, like Sri Lanka did in 2022. So these countries are looking at other options, like trading in local currencies. The second reason is political. <coughs> Some major exporters are under Western sanctions. Countries like Russia, China, even Iran, they're all sanctioned. So you cannot use dollars to buy from them. So what do countries do? They look beyond the US dollar. They try to use local currencies. And India's reasons are a mixture of both of these, political and economic. We trade a lot with countries like Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, countries that are low on dollar reserves. We also trade with sanctioned countries like Russia and Iran. So we need alternatives to the US dollar. But beyond this, there is also a third reason, a strategic goal. India is the fifth largest economy in the world. It aims to become the third largest in this decade. So we're talking about a global power, which means you cannot depend on foreign currencies. You need something more reliable like a globalized Indian rupee. It would protect you from foreign volatility. It will also insulate you from economic warfare. So we've answered the what and the why. Now let's look at the how. How can India globalize the rupee? It won't happen overnight. Just look at the Chinese. After the 2008 recession, they decided to globalize their currency, the yuan. It's been almost 16 years now, yet the yuan makes up just 5.8% of international payments. It's still behind the dollar, the euro, and the pound. So do not expect miracles with the rupee. With that said, let's look at what India can do. And just a disclaimer, this is not, there is no exact handbook here. Different currencies had different paths to globalization. The pound used colonization, the dollar used the Second World War, and the euro used institutions. But if a country wants to globalize its currency, most economists talk about four requisites, four things that you need to do. 
The first is financial stability. Your overall debt must be under control, your inflation must be moderate, and your per capita income should be high. Various RBI committees have talked about this. They say fiscal deficit should be less than 3.5% of the GDP, and inflation must be less than 5%. And these levels must be maintained over a long period of time. If you've been in a car accident, signal stability. And I'm afraid India is not there yet. India's fiscal deficit is 5.8% of the GDP, so we need to fix it first. That is the first requirement. The second and the third requisites are linked. And the logic is quite simple here. You need more people to buy and hold the rupee. But they should have a reason to do that. Either India should export a lot of goods, in which case you can use the rupee to buy those goods or buy these exports. Or it must be great investment. The Indian rupee must be great investment. Let's look at exports first. India makes up just 2% of global exports. The US makes up 8.5% and China makes up almost 15%. So India's share needs to increase. US still produces 8.5%. That can change overnight if we invest in ourselves. If not, other countries may not want the rupee. Just look at Russia. They decided to call off the rupee-ruble trade system. Why? Because Moscow was stuck with billions of unusable rupees. Which brings us to the investment angle. Let's go back to, to the year 2010. Assume that you had one dollar back then. One dollar was worth 45 Indian rupees in 2010. Almost 14 years have passed. Today, that one dollar is worth almost 83 Indian rupees. So the dollar has appreciated in value, but the rupee has not. And do you want to know why the dollar is still king of all dollars? There you go. Meaning the rupee has not been a good investment. So you need to expand your exports and make the rupee desirable. Finally, let's look at the fourth requisite. Removing state controls. You can pump endless foreign money into Indian markets, but the opposite is not allowed. You cannot take unlimited amounts of rupee outside India. There are limits on this movement. And these limits are called capital controls. And investors do not like them. What if their funds get stuck in India? What if the value keeps falling? So investors like currencies that flow freely. Same with currency value. The rupee is often defended by the Central Bank of India. If it falls too steeply, the RBI intervenes. They sell dollars in the market to prop up the rupee. Again, investors do not like this. They prefer a robust, free-floating currency. So the challenge ahead is huge. But the good news is that India is quite serious about it. In 2022, the RBI announced a big move. It allowed international trade settlements in rupees. Basically, traders could buy and sell in rupees, and many countries now accept the Indian currency. Countries like Bhutan, Nepal, the UAE, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, even Iran. All these countries allow trade in Indian rupees. Plus, India's exports are gradually rising. India's total exports were worth $500 billion in the year 2020. They increased to $770 billion in 2022, and they were expected to reach $900 billion in the last financial year. We're still waiting for official data. So to recap, there is a strategic need to globalize the rupee. There is political will to do it, and the financial requisites are slowly being achieved. All right. Now, I'm glad as heck fire... What you need to do, and good for India, they, they need to do what they're doing. But what what <laughs> what she explained is instead of her saying India, when she was explaining how to be a reserve currency, think of how easily if another administration was in, the few things needed to be twerked in our policies and other things that she mentioned to keep us a reserve currency, world reserve currency. And if we added some sort of manufacturing to where we, our exports went from 8.5%, the second largest in the world, and went up, say, maybe like 10% while China's, and I did a show just before this one where China is, the CCP government is helping their companies by funneling money into them so they can export stuff to get that export number up to 15%. If the CCP wasn't throwing more money at their economy than the Americans are, uh, that number would probably be matching the Americans' export numbers. 
So uh, if you know the economy, if you know history, and you can take what people are saying and just take that word India and put America in there and see how, just how little bit of work we'd have to do to recapture world reserve currency status and confidence. A lot of things got to happen, but in the big scheme, it's really not. You guys have a nice day. I said, have a good day, sir.